We welcome everyone back to another edition of our Bible study class, uh, and um, we're glad that you're able to come and be with us. Uh, let us begin, as is our custom, uh, with the recitation of the prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to descend upon us and enlighten us in understanding the Word of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Master, who loves mankind, illumine our hearts with the light of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our mind to understand the teachings of your gospel. Instill in us also the fear of your blessed commandments, that may, we may overcome all carnal desires, entering upon a spiritual life and understanding and acting in all things according to your holy will. For to you are the enlightenment of our souls and bodies, O Christ God, and to you we give glory, together with your eternal Father, your all holy, gracious, and light creating spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory be to Christ. We're in, again, we're very excited to be with you today, and to continue in our study of the Word of God. I am very glad that we were able to hear from so many people uh, this past week, uh, asking questions, and um, I'm glad that you didn't give up on us over the long summer break. Um, please continue to uh, stay with us and, and uh, send in your questions and your comments. I'll do my best I can uh, to be able to answer them for you. And uh, uh, it's always a, a joy and a delight to hear from you. Uh, <clears throat> we continue in our study of the book of Genesis in the Old Testament. Uh, those of you who, who are following by way of the uh, Orthodox uh, Study Bible is on page 12. Again, it seems so funny that, you know, we were doing in the New Testament, and here we're on 1,800 and so forth, and here we're on page 12. And uh, it's Genesis, we're still in chapter 6, and uh, it's, uh, we're going to be at verse 9. If you're in this book, the subheading is called The Righteousness of uh, Noah and the Building of the Ark. Uh, last week we talked about the uh, righteousness of, uh, of Noah, and uh, we continue uh, today. Uh, please follow with me. This is chapter 6 of Genesis. That's the first book of the Bible, and we are at verse 9. This is the, be this is the genealogy of Noah, or the Teladoth of Noah. He was a righteous man who was perfect in his, gener uh, in his generation, and he was well-pleasing to God. So Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jepheth. Now the earth was corrupt before God and filled with unrighteousness. Thus the Lord looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh corrupted their way upon the earth. Then God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with unrighteousness through them, and behold, it will destroy them with the earth. Uh, if you remember last week, I told you that uh, God's deep and abiding love for his creation uh, before he creates man in uh, the uh, uh, first um, creation story, uh, he creates the world and it is good and, and, and God loves this creation. Uh, it is something that is precious uh, to his creation. And you notice here that God is blaming man for corrupting this, uh, this creation because he is corrupt. And because man, uh, like we talked before, is this, uh, this bridge uh, between God and creation, uh, so that kind of uh, uh, God and creation are united through man. Uh, what affects one affects the other, uh, if you will. 
so therefore, uh, the corruption of man uh, affects the corruption uh, of, uh, of God's creation. Uh, we see this today very easily uh, when we talk about uh, the ecology especially. Uh, how because of man, uh, we cannot blame God, we, can bl blame, we cannot blame anything else. We blame ourselves, we blame mankind for polluting the air and, and the water that we drink and all these other different things. Uh, the land, uh, landfills. Um, those of you who are, are my age, and we're not going to say how old that is, but if you remember uh, back in the 60s, uh, uh, the Love Canal, uh, there are a few people that are shaking their heads. They're not afraid to admit that they're that old. Uh, but uh, the Love Canal uh, up in the Buffalo area, I believe, that there were a lot of people that were uh, getting cancer. Uh, and after, uh, especially brain cancer, uh, children especially, and they investigated and found that it was a result of the land being polluted. Uh, uh, there, there were chemicals that were there that was built on uh, this chemical dump, and as a result, uh, the land was polluted. People were getting uh, 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 cancer through these chemicals. Uh, there are other places that because of high-intensity wires uh, uh, that were uh, built in their area, they were getting cancer and so forth. Uh, only God knows uh, what is uh, the, these houses that are built on. In fact, uh, e most recently, uh, I, I learned from my wife because she watches this on television that, what is it, Kate plus eight, uh, where this woman has uh, these eight children. Uh, they had to move out of the house that they lived in because the children were getting sick. And they found out that there was all kind of black mold and, and as they were trying to clean the house they were finding more and more germs and disease and mold so they had to leave the house. How does that happen? You see? So there, there's all kind of uh, corruption and it was man that corrupted uh, the earth and uh, there was because of all kinds of unrighteousness there was, uh, there was immorality and we talked about that immorality. Uh, that that was threatening the existence of the earth, and um, we. I, I also wanted to point out that uh, among uh, all of these people, uh, Noah was uh, was righteous. Okay, and uh, we miss uh, the translation. When I went back to the original uh, language and so we're taking a look at and doing some research this past week, uh, this. Uh, perf perfection uh, that is translated here, uh, uh, there, there are two understandings. Not, not only was he righteous, and what we mean by righteous is there, it, it's more of a kind of a legal terminology uh, that uh, Noah was righteous before God. He kept God's law. Uh, he was obedient to God, and that's a very important word. In fact, if you were to look at uh, monastic literature, especially in uh, the writings of the Desert Fathers, they place obedience as like the prime virtue. We must be obedient uh, to our father confessor. We are obedient in the, in the monastery to the spiritual father uh, or the Geronda or the Geronditsa in, in, in the monastic monastery of nuns. Uh, we are always obedient that, uh, and in that way there is like a legal uh, relationship of being in the right relationship with, uh, and in a legal uh, matter. Uh, we are always following the proper law, you see, uh, and that's what we mean by righteousness. Uh, but also uh, the fathers of the church and the scripture talks about that uh, Noah is also in uh, a perfect in 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 a a a, um, uh, a ritual uh, uh, relationship with God. Um, that uh, he is also uh, in in a in a holy uh, relationship with God. Uh, that there is a certain purity. There is a a holy innocence to him. Uh, so uh, not only is he righteous in that he does not 
uh, uh, break God's law. Uh, he is not guilty of, of, of these uh, grotesque sins uh, that, are, uh, that are bringing the corruption. But also there, there's a cultic aspect that, that he is a man of prayer. Uh, he is a man of, of piety. He, he is a man of sincerity. He's honest. He's noble. You see what I mean? So that there is a wholeness to him. There is a complete, he's not phony. He's not a hypocrite. You, you, you see what I mean? The, the, that, the, that everything about him, there is a goodness. Uh, and, and maybe there are many of us, uh, I have been blessed to, to know truly good people. I, I don't know if you've ever known anyone like that. Uh, someone who is just just really a nice, good, holy, good person. Uh, this is the type of person that Noah is. The complete opposite in uh, 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 the people uh, of the time. And this is why God is choosing him. Not because, just because he's obedient, because he's completely different, inside out, you see. So this is what we're talking about. And uh, he's going to be chosen for a, a specific po uh, purpose. Then God says to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth, earth is filled with unrighteousness through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourselves an ark of square timber, and you shall make the ark in compartments and cover it inside and outside with pitch. Thus you shall make the ark 300 cubits in length, 50 cubits in breadth, and 30 cubits in height. Now when you assemble the ark, you shall gradually finish it up to a cubic at a top and set the door in, uh, in its side, and you shall make the ark with lower, second, and third stories. And behold, I am bringing a flood of water on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh, in which is the breath of life. Uh, as in uh, the uh, Old Testament, the instructions that are given by God, and we're going to see this uh, in Exodus with the building of the temple, there are specific instructions because they are, are given by God, and they are given by God for salvation, because only God can save, only God can give the proper instruction that would, would bring about any type of salvation. Salvation, no matter what man can do, he can't bring about salvation. So that, let's put it on this level. If God were to say to Noah, all right, there's going to be this flood and, and give all this information, now build an ark. He would sit there and, you know, what's an ark? How do you go about building this? Let alone, not just for the family, but, you know, for the animals and everything else that's going to come. In other words, Noah has, does not, although he is righteous, although he is, is cultically pure, you know, uh, or, 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 or holy, he is not able to save himself. And that is something that the Orthodox Church has always stressed. Uh, salvation is possible only with God. No matter how we try, without the aid of God, we cannot save ourselves. This is why Jesus says to the uh, apostles and to the people whom he preaches, without me you can do nothing. Uh, no one can come by the Father except through me. 
uh, I am the door, you know, what we call the great I am's from the gospel. I am the door. Uh, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. You see, uh, without Jesus, there's no way that we could come to the Father. There's no way that we could be saved. So therefore, God has to give specific instructions. Uh, X amount of cubics long, wide, you know, all of these different things. Just like we will see him, see him give instructions about uh, the temple of meeting uh, uh, and, and, and the Ark of the Covenant and, and the sacred utensils. Man doesn't know how to worship God because we are alienated from him, you see. We don't know how to pray. In the Gospel of Luke, when the Lord comes down from the mountain and after praying for X amount of time, one of the apostles says, Lord, teach us how to pray. We don't know how to pray. We still don't know how to pray. Even though he has given us the Lord's prayer, it's very hard to pray, right? Without the help of God. In fact, this is why even Jesus says, when you come to a point when you don't know how to pray, don't worry, the Holy Spirit will pray for you. Right? And we'll talk about that some other time in another class, okay? Let's get back to, to poor Noah. How do, what is an ark? How do you build this? Okay. Uh, uh, another thing that I, I want to be uh, able to uh, explain to you that it, it is missing in this English translation, and, and like I, I said many times before, and I'll keep saying it uh, until I die, uh, the worst language that you could translate Scripture into is English. Okay. Uh, but uh, one thing that is missing is the, the, the ark that is, is being built here is going to be now reminiscent of the, the, the type of uh, dwelling that we're going to see in the book of Exodus that is going to keep Moses safe. Okay? Uh, although... Uh, Moses' mother is going to use more like twigs, but you're going to have uh, his mother line it with pitch also. You know, this substance is going to act like a glue. All right. But also this, this, this wood that is uh, being used is the same type of wood, you see. So therefore... Uh, this ark that is being built here is the uh, same type of, uh, if you will, uh, 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 I forgot the word, uh, a bush, uh, basket that is going to be used uh, by Moses' mother to keep Moses safe in the water. Uh, we're, we're going to see uh, the Pharaoh is going to give an edict that all the male children of the Hebrews have to be killed because they're reproducing too much and they're outnumbering the Hebrews, I mean the, the, the um, uh, Egyptians, so they're afraid that they're going to take over. So the way of, of taking care of that, they're going to kill the, the firstborn. So because Moses is such a beautiful child, his mother wants him to escape from that death so she makes this, this ark or this basket and sends him down the river, Nile, you see, and uh, he goes to uh, Pharaoh's daughter and he's saved. Uh, so uh, just like we have the flood with uh, Noah, uh, we have the river Nile, uh, the Nile River, uh, saving Moses. And we're going to have the Red Sea, if you will, uh, you know, with the parting of the sea for uh, the crossing of the sea to to be safe from the uh, Pharaoh. And, and, and there, there's a lot of other symbolisms we're going to be talking about. Uh, in fact, uh, even uh, uh, the uh, church fathers are going to even carry this further because uh, here at St. Nicholas, if you're uh, following the uh, new calendar, uh, tomorrow is the feast of the uh, uh, birth of the Mother of God, uh, the Nativity of the Panagia, 
the fathers of the church are going to see in this the symbolism of the mother God. She is the ark. Why? Because within her, safely being carried, is Christ. You see? So she is the protecting dwelling that is carrying Christ. So they will refer to her in the hymnography as uh, uh, the one who carries Christ. So uh, therefore, um, there, there's a, a lot of rich symbolism. So uh, now he is going to make this vessel. Uh, there's going to be different um, uh, um, uh, stories and different uh, compartments. And there are specific instructions on, on how uh, this is going to be uh, uh, going to be put together and, and, and how it's going to be put together. Okay? And behold, it says, this is verse 17, I am bringing in a flood of water on the earth uh, and uh, to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Whatever is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. Now we have to be able to point here that, that whenever uh, God is acting in a negative way, there is always a positive action to follow. Remember? when we first started, when God is, if you will, to use the terminology of the scripture, punishing Adam and Eve, or giving consequences uh, for uh, their actions, the sins that they have committed, in Genesis 3.15, he starts talking about what we call the Proto-Evangelium, uh, where he starts talking about the enmity that will be put between uh, uh, her heel and, and the serpent, right? He starts talking about the salvation that is going to come. The same thing is happening here. Uh, I will bring the flood of water on the earth to destroy from under the heaven the flesh, and is, uh, and, and, uh, which is the breath of life. Whatever is on the earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your daughter, and your wives with you, okay? He will establish a covenant. There will be a sacred agreement uh, there, uh, and this covenant is a promise that there will be salvation for you in the future, okay? There's going to be a devastation now, but in the future, there'll be something greater that will become of this, okay? Something greater. Let's continue on. From every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of the birds, after their kind. Of animals, after their kind. And of every creeping thing on the earth, after its kind. Two of every kind. And they will enter into the ark with you, male and female, to keep them alive. You shall also take for yourselves all kinds of food to eat, and you shall gather it both for yourselves and for them. Thus Noah did according to all the Lord God commanded him. So he did. Okay? Again, he was obedient to every letter, every single thing that God told him to do. Now, in order to put this in a proper perspective, we also have to be able to realize, and I, I, I'm not trying to be corny, but I'm just trying to give you kind of a perspective, this would be sort of like him trying to build a rocket to go to the moon. This is something extraordinary. 
all right? Who in that day ever heard of building such a monstrous ship of that kind? Or having the skill to be able to do this? Or the knowledge to be able to do this? You know, was, was Noah a shipbuilder? I, I don't think so. Okay. And even for others to observe this would be something strange. Okay. Maybe ridicule. No, th 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 this is nuts. And this is something that would be impossible on one's own strength. Okay. Now, another thing that, that uh, I, I, I know that at, at one time I, I used to teach a faith class at, at Holy Trinity, our parochial school here in Warren, the only one in Ohio. And um, my students asked me, well, you know, we were talking a little bit about Noah, and they said, well, how, you know, all these animals and, you know, uh, some animals, you know, in the fallen state, they're not very nice, right? And also, we have to note here that not only were the clean animals, they were the unclean animals. You know, the people, of, the, the Jewish people had clean and unclean. They were all saved, all right? All the vegetation, all these different things. And then the food, how did they feed? Okay, now we're going to jump ahead a little bit here uh, in regards to the flood. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights, okay? But there were 150 days of that flood staying as it was. Another 150 days of until it started to subside. And then another, you know, couple days, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try to calculate it right now. And then it took seven days before, you know, uh, 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 Noah, you know, f sent out the, 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 the first, uh, the raven came back with nothing. And then another, you know, uh, amount of time, 10 days or whatever, uh, until he, you know, sent out the, 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 uh, the, uh, uh, the dove. So it was a full year before that ark settled on the top of Mount Ararat. Okay? So... How can you feed all of these people? How did, you know, how did this happen? And it was the fathers of the church that believed that because of the grace that God gave to Noah because of, holiness, of his holiness, that he had, had, uh, omitted a certain fragrance that made the animals docile. Uh, and we see this even in the history of the church. Uh, many of the saints' relics that omit this beautiful odor. Um, in fact, uh, the uh, weeping icons, how many of them have a very fragrant odor? Uh, I remember when I was doing my doctoral studies at Antiochian Village, uh, one time we were there, we were taking courses, and they had uh, uh, an icon, and they also had a relic. Uh, they they uh, call him Moses the Black. Um, uh, what is the other? Uh, Moses the Ethiopian. Who, uh, and um, it, the, the, the chapel's uh, in the basement, and we were on, like, the the second or third the third floor, and we I I opened the the door on the uh, third floor, and started going down the steps, 
and boom, as soon as you open that door, you smell that fragrant, that fragrant odor. And as we, you know, went down and, and got into the chapel, it was the relic. And the relic was sealed in the reliquary. It didn't have holes in it. But it came through a sealed reliquary. Okay? So, so this can be done. It's not something impossible. We've seen it. Uh, in fact, even in the history of the church, uh, you've heard of stories uh, of, of uh, uh, Herman of Alaska that played with bears. Uh, 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 Seraphim of Sarov, who had, uh, he had a bear as a pet. Well, bears are ferocious, uh, you know, don't go into the forest and start playing with bears. You know, I mean, they it omitted the, a fragrance or something that, that made these animals docile, you see. So therefore, uh, these miracles have a, a occurred in order for uh, the, these, these things to happen. And uh, uh, this is, of course, by the grace of God, in order to regenerate, if you will, uh, his creation. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, uh, Noah did all of these things in obedience to God. So let's go into chapter 7. Then the Lord God said to Noah, Enter the ark, you and all your family, because I have seen you righteous before me in this generation. And you shall also bring with you into the ark the clean cattle by sevens, male and female, and the unclean cattle by twos, male and female, and the clean birds of heaven by twos, and male and female, to keep seed alive on the face of the earth. For after seven more days I will cause it to rain on the earth, Forty days and forty nights, and I will blot out from the face of the earth every living thing I made. So Noah did all the Lord God commanded him. Remember I told you, clean and unclean. All of God's creation he loved, even the animals, even the animals. Now Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters came on the earth. Then Noah with his sons, his wife, his sons' wives entered the ark because of the flood waters. Also the clean and unclean birds, the clean and unclean cattle, and everything that creeps on the earth entered with Noah into the ark, two by two, male and female, as God commanded him. Then it came to pass after seven days the waters of the flood came upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the sixth month, on the seventh day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the floodgates of heaven were opened. Then it rained on the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah and his wife, his sons, Shem, Ham, and Jepheth, and their wives entered the ark. Also all the wild animals after their kind, all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing moving upon the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind entered the ark with Noah two by two, of all flesh in which is the breath of life. Again, why do we repeat this breath of life? The breath of life comes from God. It is a gift from God. It is a living thing. It belongs to God. It is the ownership of God. And because of that, no one has the right to destroy. Okay? It has the breath of life. So that those entered, male and female, all of flesh went in as God commanded him. Then the Lord God shut him in the ark. And we have to note that the Lord God closed the door. 
Okay? He was the one that shut it. He was the one that held them safe by his hand. He was the one that orchestrated all of these different things. Now, what had happened was that the people were inside. They were, were placed in an orderly manner according to which God had told them. Everything that God does is done in an orderly manner. There's nothing haphazard. If it was, stars would be running into each other. You see, there would be chaos. Even in the ark, there's order. You see, all of these things are, are, are done properly. All of these things are done properly. Um, and, and, and he is the one who, who uh, uh, shuts uh, the particular door. And it is he, uh, by his will, is now uh, keeping them safe. Okay? Now the flood was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. The waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. So the waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters. The waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the whole heavens were covered. The waters prevailed 15 cubits upward and covered all the high mountains and all flesh died that moved on the earth. Birds and cattle, wild animals and every creeping thing that moves on the earth and every man. Thus all things in those nostrils was the breath of life and everything on dry land died. So he blotted out all living things on the face of the earth, both man and cattle, creeping things and the birds of heaven. They were blotted out from the earth, and only Noah and those with him in the ark remained alive. Now the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. Okay? Um, we also have to be able to note that the people that existed at that particular time were sitting up to the very day that God closed the door. Okay? Um, and as a result, um, there was no repentance. Even when the waters came and increased, and increase and increase. They were still prevailed in their sinful life. Even though it was known that they had no use for the ark, they did not receive the grace that existed. They, they turned against it. That they would reject any kind of need for the ark. There was no pounding on the ark wanting to be rescued. Okay? Um, it is indicative also, in fact, the Lord in the Gospels uses this imagery to talk about the last day. Whenever the Lord spoke of the last day. He talked about a thief coming in the middle of the night. He also talked about a strong man. He said, if you knew when the thief was coming, you would be waiting. He talked about the strong man that had to be bound. And it is understood that that the Lord did not reveal when he would come. It would be a secret. And there are many times when people would ask, well, why doesn't the Lord reveal to us when the end will come? If we know, we could properly prepare. But it isn't true. It would be indicative 
of the people of the time of Noah. They would even sin more. Um, in fact, even in the, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man asking Father Abraham to send Lazarus to his house to warn his brothers of the calamity that has befallen him. How does Abraham respond? No. He says, they have Moses and they have the prophets. If they will not listen to them, no, and, and he says, well, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to Moses and the prophets. And he says, no. You know, they will listen to they they, they will listen to to uh, to um, uh, Lazarus, and he says, even if someone from the dead will rise, they will not believe. Him. It's the nature of evil. Okay, it's the nature of evil. Even if someone were to rise from the dead, they will not believe. Him. Uh, even uh, if someone were to know that people knew it was going to be the end, okay? They saw the rains come. They knew that the ark would save them. They did not repent. The same is going to be true uh, on the last day. Um, there will be an indifference to God and to his grace. Um, uh, they will not be able to respond. Uh, there will be no repentance because of the distance uh, between them and God and their inability uh, to, uh, to uh, repent. Uh, and the Lord uh, uses this uh, in the Gospels. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, even Peter, uh, in uh, his epistle, the second letter of Peter, uh, he also uses this as a uh, uh, explanation of what will happen on the last day. Uh, just like uh, the people at the time of Noah, so it will be on the last days, where uh, people will be so consumed in their wickedness and their living, they will not recognize the times. In fact, even even Jesus uh, talks about. He says, you know, he says, when you when you see that the uh, in the evening the 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 sky is is uh, red. You know, you know that this is going to be a nice day. If you see in the morning, uh, what a red sky at, at night, sailors delight, right? If it's red in the morning, you notice you, there's going to be rain. There's going to be bad weather. Uh, all these other things, you know how to predict, but you know you you can't read the 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 the, the signs of the times, and he says you can't recognize, you know who's before you. You you, you can't realize that he's the Messiah. Because of the evil that's in your heart, you know, you can you can do all these other predictions, but you you can't you can't understand the truth that you're hearing in the gospel. The the same is true on the last day. I thank all of you for for listening and for being with us today. We're going to be here next week too, right? Yes, and hopefully you'll come and join us. We're going to stop here because uh, the next chapter is going to require. Uh, some extra uh, 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 instruction but uh, we will be here next week we hope that you'll come and join us uh, as we continue on in chapter 8 if you have any questions please uh, email me and I'll do my best to answer them if you have any comments you'd like to share uh, be glad to listen to them please come and join us next week and we will end today with a prayer as is our custom to the Holy Mother of God Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are truly deserving of glory, O birth giver of God, the ever blessed and most pure Mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim. And beyond, compare more glorious than the seraphim. 
who as a virgin gave birth to God the Word, true birth giver of God, we magnify you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, glory to Jesus Christ.